turning to a topic you may not want little ears to listen in on, so we like to give that little warning. Here's your chance to send them out of the room for a few minutes. We're asking a question my next guest says a lot of women are thinking. The question is this, is something wrong with my level of desire? Kristen Hodson is a licensed social worker and sex therapist. Her goal is to take the mystery out of desire and help you discover your unique desire style. It's great to have you. Thanks. You're so brave to tackle these topics with us. I love us talking about it. And to help us through those. And you love talking about it, I know, because women don't talk about these right. topics. So thanks for being brave and doing it in a respectful way with us here in the studio today. I'm hung up on the word desire. Do you really find women are worried about their level of desire? Oh, absolutely. Like what I hear commonly is I don't have enough desire. I'm broken. My It's causing marital conflict because mm. I just don't want to be intimate enough and women feeling like what's wrong with me? Especially when you walk to the checkout lines and you're seeing all these things about sexuality. Sure, and you're those like, magazine headlines. Uh huh. And, and you're like, well, everyone else must be feeling it, but I'm not. Well, this was a sad word to me. You say it taps into that inadequacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of women, again, the broken piece of I'm not enough. I. I guess I just, there can be worth, there can be shame, there can be all sorts of things. You point to research that sheds, I'll call it a new light on sort of an old stereotype. Yes, so Emily Nagoski is the game changer in this because what she actually did, we talk about desire really broadly, and what she did is break it down into a scientific understanding. And so it's her research that has helped break down desire to be a much more doable, approachable understanding so people can um, apply it into their marriages and have happier, healthier, more successful relationships. So do you think that modern day definition, that modern day expectation was needed? Very much so because again, so the way we talk about desire is this spontaneous way that I'm walking down the street, I'm doing the dishes, I'm at work and I'm feeling it. Like I want to be <laughs> intimate. That's the only way we talk about desire. That it hits desire. me just in, it out, hits of the me blue. out of the blue. And I would say most men experience desire in that way. So we don't often talk about responsive desire, which is the way majority of women experience desire. Describe that. So they are going along and it doesn't pop out of the sky, but say the kids are put to bed or they're in a different place and they start kissing and they start getting turned on and they're like, oh, I do want to be doing this right now. And they keep getting more engaged and then desire shows up. And so that makes them not feel broken because they're like, Oh yeah, that is desire. I just didn't know that was desire. I am feeling it just in a different setting than I thought I would or should. Yes, I didn't know that was a thing that I could be responsive to someone else's spontaneous that desire. That makes sense, so the response to the situation. Absolutely. You really want women to tap into their own desire style. Why does that matter? I mean, obviously in your individual yeah. relationship that's going to play play a part. Because we're all, all of our sexuality is as unique as a snowflake. So everyone's is gonna be different. So understanding that we have, I like to break it down this way, that you have a gas pedal, your accelerator, what turns me on and you have a break what turns me off and what um, doesn't work for me and as we start to understand what turns me on like smell taste touch context mm -hmm. things that turn me off that turn me away smell taste touch context we can start to understand do I have a more sensitive break am I more sensitive to being turned off do I have a more sensitive gas pedal? Do I need to learn how to put on more gas? And you can start to play with that. And you say identifying that will translate to a deeper intimacy, more intimacy it between can, your partner. Because even, even learning these things and having a conversation with your partner to go, oh, I need more context or I need situations where I can respond. I'm not broken. I do want you. Mm -hmm. I really want you. But I need, I'm going to be more responsive in my desire. You talked about the gas pedal versus the brake. Mm -hmm. There is an analogy you make with an emergency brake. Talk yes. to me about that. So this is really important because a lot of women may have experienced trauma, um, sexual abuse, or they have, they don't feel trust in their relationships. So think of the emergency brake. Mm -hmm. When we're talking desire, we think candles, we think romance, we think I need more of that to get turned on. Well, if we have an emergency brake, it doesn't matter how much gas we put on. We're not going to go anywhere. So identifying if we do have an emergency break, something that where we don't feel safe or we have historical stuff we haven't worked through, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we need to first identify that, put our emergency break down so that we can start using our pedals. I get you. That's a good analogy. That's a yeah. really good analogy. Yeah, that's, that, yeah. Fair to say, is there some fluctuation though, Kristen, along kind of our life path, older, younger, young kids, life demands, life responsibilities, it's always gonna be going up and down. All the time, and that also can help people to not panic, 
to look at that desire over the context of a lifespan and the life of a relationship, kids very much changes things. The level of stress, stress is a big indicator of how that's gonna impact your desire. And so you can have kids, you can have um, empty nesters. You, there's a belief that as people age that their desire goes down. No, that's wrong. It can actually increase as you get older. Oh, really? Yes, and so understanding that you're gonna have these pockets that can look a little like this uh -huh. is okay. So there's context to what you're feeling and when you're feeling it. Yes, so that's another important piece, context, take tickling. Tickling can feel really great when you're playful and flirty, but when you are annoyed and someone tickles you, horrible. So <laughs> Talk context, about a break. right? So context can really make a difference in terms of our openness and responsiveness. And context of kids, if we're in the middle of something, a lot of women say, "Don't come in and initiate right when I'm in the thick of doing kids." Mm -hmm. That's not going to be a context that's going to work for me. Mm -hmm. So understanding these four elements can really make a difference. Do you find um, that that uh, body image? plays a role? Huge. It, it just desire. occupies so much space that instead of being in our body and embracing and being a part of the moment, we're watching our body. We're worried about what this fold is doing or what that looks like or what our partner's thinking and we're not really engaged. How and do so, you get out of that? So you have, it, it, there's a really great book called uh, Radical Body Acceptance mm -hmm. and taking an active approach. Oftentimes we think our body image will just arrive, but we have to actively practice having positive body image messages and starting to train our brain because we get so many negative body image messages. This is an important topic. You've yes. handled it so well. If people Thank you. want additional information, if they perhaps need some one-on-one -on -one help in this area, how can they get in touch with you? So they can go to thehealinggroup.com and we'll post more about this. All right, Kristen, thank you so much.